What's up, Waymakers? It's me, Mommy Suna. <laughs> What's going on? Ready to put some makeup on and talk some crap about <laughs> Young Living? <laughs> What's going on in Young Living land, guys? What's happening? The last time we like honed in on Young Living was when they were launching their new fast start bonus and trying to get enrollments up, give incentive to recruit and to continue to recruit, recruit, recruit. I'm pretty sure that video was the bringing sexy back video, which was a thing. Let's touch up on what's going on now. So this past weekend I was out of town with some family doing some good time things, petting deers and stuff, you know. So I actually had to miss this whole thing, but this weekend, as I'm filming this, they had their New Year's kickoff. So if you don't know anything about Young Living's New Year kickoffs, they do this every year. And last year is the year that they had Mary Young on stage who gave us the we're operating at a loss video. How long do you think Young Living could survive if we don't have any profit and we're operating in the hole. We're operating at a loss. So of course, this kind of thing is important to watch. I got a lot of people since I was out of town, including my dearest, sweet, sweet friend, Mombi, MLM Mombi. Follow her on Facebook, Instagram, all the social medias. She's amazing. But she was able to screen record the part we're gonna watch today because this is like a whole three day thing. This is basically like we're going to be watching a convention, pretty much. Lots of important information, basically them talking about what their plans are for the upcoming year and all those things, very important things. I'm sure that there's a lot of really interesting information here so I'm excited to share it with you what we're gonna watch today the video is almost two hours long I'm speeding it up a little bit so it won't be that long and also I'm telling you right now I'm gonna be cutting stuff out but I'm leaving all the important stuff in all the context in but I just don't want to make you guys sit through a four hour long video of me <laughs> watching this shit and then talking about it so that might be happening but lots of great information here we're gonna really get to see what Young Living's plan is for 2023 so before we do that though I just want to thank the sponsor of today's video, HelloFresh. We all have New Year's goals, and HelloFresh makes it easier than ever to achieve them. Whether you want to save time by skipping the grocery store, save money on dinner time, or just to eat better, HelloFresh has you covered. Say heck no, man, to expensive, unhealthy takeout and try HelloFresh instead. Let them do the grocery shopping for you and conveniently deliver it to your door. Saving money is important to me, and I like that HelloFresh helps me cook a high quality, healthy meal for way cheaper than anything I could ever get through takeout and honestly more delicious. I've never tried anything from HelloFresh that I didn't like, and that's putting it mildly. If I could eat every single meal by HelloFresh, I would, because they're all just so delicious. Also, I never have to leave my house for HelloFresh, and I'm a hermit who never leaves her house, so I love that. There are other ways that HelloFresh can also help you save time. Their latest line of fast and fresh meals featuring robust flavors and filling portions are ready in less than 15 minutes. You can enjoy restaurant quality recipes like falafel power bowls or Southwest pork and bean burritos. You can also choose from their calorie smart or carb smart recipes if that's what your new year's resolution is. And it's really all customizable. You can swap proteins or sides, upgrade your protein or add protein to a vegetarian dish. And also the big game's coming up soon too. So HelloFresh can make your get together easier and more delicious. Treat your guests to barbecue baby back ribs, brownies, or anything in between. Now I feel like I say this every time, but HelloFresh is offering you guys a sick deal with a sweet discount and it is the the best one I've seen yet. You can't miss out on this. You need to jump on this now. Go to HelloFresh.com, use the code SavannahMarie21 for 21 free meals plus free shipping. Again, go to HelloFresh.com and use the code SavannahMarie21 for 21 free meals plus free shipping. Unbelievable. This offer will not last forever, so go get started today. I'm imploring that you do. You're gonna love HelloFresh, I guarantee it. So thank you again, HelloFresh, for sponsoring today's video. Now it's time for some essential oils that you shouldn't eat. Eat HelloFresh instead. Don't eat essential oils. Okay, let's go. Okay, without further ado, we have a lot to get to, so let's just press play. This video, I'm like, let's press play and then immediately keep talking. This video starts kind of in the middle. I know this part was not recorded by Mombi. It was recorded by one of her Young Living contacts. So they weren't able to get the very beginning. This is the beginning. This is, I think, like maybe half hour into the opening stuff. So we're not too far off. And also to, I guess, just reiterate this point too, this is only part of it. As of right now, I still have 
have another four hours of footage on another file to watch through. I haven't watched through it, dude. There's so much here. There's so much to talk about. But yeah, this is starting off in the middle. Also, there's a Zoom chat going on here on the side. I'm not gonna cut that out just because a lot of times these people say some crazy shit, some things that implicate them in doing things that they're not supposed to. And I think that's important to show, but you're gonna be able to see their names. So I'm just putting this out here right now. I'm not putting the names out here so people can go contact them and bully them. Actually, I would prefer that you didn't do that. I don't condone that. Please do not contact these people in any way. If they say anything crazy, don't do it. If you feel the need to, you can email Young Living's Compliance and complain about that. But please do not contact any of those people. Don't contact them. Don't harass them. Don't bully them. None of that shit. But I'm going to leave it here because I feel like it's important. Let's get started. That's our why. Oh, I missed Everything their why. Everything else to that. That's why we have our products. That's why we have our, our, our incentives for you to go and do that. Because the way we change the world is one person at a time. And that happens through you, through your teams. That's the only way we can do it. That's why this partnership means so much. It's why it matters. But here we are 28 years as the leader. And this is hard fought ground that we, we occupy. We've done a lot of work to be here in this moment. This is Gary and St. Mary's. But we've earned this place. And we need to fight for this ground. And, and I think we've been playing some defense and I, I know why, but I'm tired of playing defense. I think it's time for us to play some offense. So basically what he's saying there is he's like, instead of waiting for the haters to call us out on more shit, we need to just be ahead of it. Or you could just try not doing anything sketchy and weird in the first place. How about that? How's that for an idea? If you were just like honest from the get-go, we wouldn't have to sit here and call you out about lying about seed to seal and stuff like that. But since you spent nearly three freaking decades holding on to this lie and perpetuating this lie that that ended up not being what everyone thought it was. We stepped in because we felt like there was a need for the truth to come out. If by being offensive instead of defensive means owning up to your shit and just being straight up honest from the get-go. Oh my God, I just realized, I have a tree behind me. <laughs> Our Christmas tree is very, very large. The box is very, very large, but we don't have duct tape to duct tape the box back together. And since we've been on vacation, we haven't had the chance to go to the store to get duct tape. Actually, I told my husband to go get duct tape and he went to Target and went to the office section. And he was like, they don't have duct tape here. And I was like, go to the home section. <laughs> Like the place where they have like home improvement shit. That's where it would be anyway. So waiting on that duct tape. That's why there's a Christmas tree behind me. Just kind of like, <clears throat> oh, but okay. So for the honesty thing, I don't see a way in which they can continue as a company by being honest about like what's going on. Because I feel like there's just so much sketchy shit in Young Living. Let's see, is 2023 the year where they're going to actually start being more open and honest about that stuff? Just be like, fine, you guys want our testing results? Fine, you can have them. A part of me really thinks that they're not releasing them because they either would have to, in my opinion, forge them or falsify them, I guess, to be able to appear better than their competitors, which I don't think they are. So they'd have to lie, adulterate them, forge them, or they would have to literally willingly admit that their oils are no better than everybody else's. And that obviously would pose an issue because their prices are so high. And then they wouldn't be able to justify the high price point because that's how they justify it right now. See, that's what I'm saying is like, you want to be offensive? You got a lot of work to do. I mean, at this point, I'm like, even if they do come out with testing results, am I really going to trust them? Because they're desperate at this point. It's entirely possible that they would forge them just to make them look better but then in reality they're not better i don't want to accuse them of doing that before they actually come out with anything but i will be shocked if this is the year that they actually do it i'm not gonna hold my breath though but anyway yeah if you want to be offensive then you need to be honest i'm ready to and that's what this strategy is all about your strategy your vision determines honest? your path the first time i went snowmobiling with gary i'd only been once before and uh, there was a member of our team that went went with us who seemed to fall into every obstacle ran into every tree went off the path all the time and at the end of the day, Gary said, you know what? Here's the thing, your vision determines your path. If you're staring at the tree, guess what you, guess what you do? You run right into the tree. And this is true in our lives and our business as well. If we're staring at the obstacles, if we're worried about, about the threats, we're not seeing the, the bigger picture, the vision, the opportunity. I do this exercise all the time, but look at, this is something that, I, that Gary taught us every single day and shame on us if we didn't learn this. Put your hand right here in front of your face. What do you see? I see my hand. Now, pull, now put it as far away from yourself as you can. What do you see? I see beautiful people. I see everything. I see an incredible room because I've moved the obstacle and my focus on it. Gary never focused on what the obstacles were to success. Of course they're there. Of course they are. They're always going to be there. That's how you qualify and earn it. 
But if you focus too much on the obstacle, it gets in the way. I feel like anytime anyone talks about Gary Young, it's this kind of shit. Like, I, I can't imagine that Gary Young was constantly this, like, philosophical, <laughs> just, like, deep, you know? I can't imagine that he is the man that they always try to make him out to be. I just don't believe it, dude. Literally like how people would in a religious cult or something. Whenever you feel like you, you have questions and you don't know what to do or where to go, just read the Bible. Just read these verses. It's almost the same thing. It's like, if you ever don't know what to do, if you're ever stuck, just remember that Gary said this. And it's like, I always say young living is a cult and I'm never gonna step back from that at this point. The way that they immortalize the late great Gary Young is so freaking culty, man. Let's expand our vision. And to wrap up, uh, I don't know if any of you brought your Envision, but we, we included an Envision oil in your bag. If you have it, can you pull it out, please? And I'll, I'll, I'll pass it around for those of you that don't have it. This is one of my favorites. It's got black spruce, geranium, rose, orange, some beautiful oils here. Okay, those of you at home, hopefully you have Envision as well. I'm sure you do. I've seen your houses. You have all the oils. <laughs> You have two of all the oils, actually, or maybe more. Yeah. <laughs> yes, I know. Say in the quiet part out loud. Yeah, we know. You guys are obsessed. If we tell you you need to buy an oil for something, you'll do it. You'll go through with it. Doesn't matter if you can afford it or not. You're going to do it because we said to. I've seen your houses. I've seen how many thousands of dollars you've spent on our products. I know. <laughs> He's like, if you have Envision, can you pull it out? Who am I getting? Of course you have it. You're in our cult. You're in our oily cult. Of course you have it. Okay, I want you to I want you to hold this up to your up to your face. And, and I, wanna, I wanna do a breathing exercise that I often do. So what you do is you inhale for four, you hold for seven, you exhale for eight. You ready? Oh, okay. So, okay, okay. Some of you guys have probably heard me talk about this before, but I do have essential oils in my house and I do use them. Not like these fucking people. I use it for aromatherapy and not even aromatherapy, just like putting it in my bathrooms and shit to make the poo poo room not smell so poo poo. I do have some and I brought one up here to try this because, okay, seriously, like I can't do much essential oiling. I have like seasonal allergies and stuff. So like I'm pretty sensitive to like very strong fragrances. So this is something that like I have never done. Like I've tried to just diffuse oils before and they always give me a headache. They always mess with me somehow. I've never really had benefits the way that these people always say that they do from using essential oils. And they would say, well, that's because you're not using Young Living. I did bring one up here to do this little exercise just to see what happens. I guarantee that when I do this, my tongue's gonna start swelling up. I'm gonna start sneezing. Like, and it's not because I'm not using Young Living. I'm using what? Uh, brand is it? Oh, Revive. And this is not sponsored. But Revive is an essential oil company that's like anti-MLM. So that's why I chose to buy stuff from them. Their marketing is literally like, hey, get these essential oils and don't get them through an MLM. So I like them. I like what they stand for. So that's why I bought them. But they say, and their testing results say, same quality oils at way lower prices because we're not an MLM. Yeah, that's generally how it works. So anyway, I bought allergy relief. Like I was telling you guys, I have seasonal allergies. So I'm going to sniff this. And if it starts making me all sneezy and shit, then I won't be surprised. One, two, three, four, hold. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Exhale, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So far, not bad. I like the smell of this. Okay, so it's eucalyptus, first of all. Rosemary oil, lavender. I don't know what that is. Is that lavender? I don't know. Peppermint, which we know has menthol in it, so it helps clear the sinuses. No, it smells really good. I mean, it almost smells like gum. <laughs> like peppermint, uh, menthol -y. Yeah. So far it's not bothering me. And actually, I feel like I just like put on some Vicks Vapor Rub. I don't know. I'll let you know if anything starts getting all tickly and stuff. That's not bad. All right. I'll take it for, for your little breathing exercise. It's just like so weird to me that people carry around essential oils just to do this shit. Just like... Like, it's weird, right? If it helps, it helps. But like, I'm not going to sit here and be like, I'm going to take this instead of Benadryl for my allergy attack. Hell no. Now I want you to think about your year. I told you it's coming. It's here. And what this year looks like depends on us. It depends on what we do. The, the story has not been written and we get to write it. It's going to write itself if we're not intentional about it. And your story is going to write itself if you're not intentional about it. I'm telling you, and we're gonna tell you today where we're going. We want you to come with us. And I want you to know where you're going. I want you to set your goals and let's dream again a little bit, shall we? I think we've lost our dreams. We've, we've kind of been, like I said, we've been playing defense. We've been more concerned about what we're losing and not about what we can gain. People are going to come and go. They, they are. Not everyone gets us. Not everyone is part of our tribe. But the only way we find, find those Ugh, people is by giving them a chance. Shut Let's go out and give up. those people a chance. Let's go out and give our best to 2023 because we've earned it. 
And you know what? We're better this year than we were last year. And we're better than we were, we were the year before. We've qualified ourselves for this moment and we're ready for it. We and I'm excited this. to be approaching this new year with all of you. So without further ado, I'm going to invite up someone who's going to get way more applause than me. And it always makes me jealous, but he deserves it because he works so dang hard. And that's Andrew Armstrong, our general manager of the U.S. and Canada. Please welcome that Andrew. It's time to win. It's time to start playing to win instead of playing not to lose. Oh, okay. I get that. I was like, isn't that the same thing? Playing to win, playing not to lose. I think it's just like wordplay. Like it sounds like the same thing. Like you either win or you lose. And if you're playing not to lose, then you're playing to win, right? But no, I think he's just like, our mindset is that we just go in it just trying to keep our heads above water, but we need to be champions. That's what I'm hearing now, now that I think about it. We're going to be more intentional about helping you build your business, helping you and your leaders build their business, and building back, building better, building stronger, okay? <laughs> oh, you mean like build back better? <laughs> Mm, I wonder where I've heard that before. Some guy that you guys don't like over there in Mormon land. Each of you are and will continue to bleed for young living. You will not stop until Gary and Mary's mission is fulfilled. You will not stop until the voices of each of your team members are uh, you represent is heard. Really? For that, I could not be any more grateful. You are the best leaders in this dang industry, in this company, you are the best. Oh, that's the thing about this. Okay, now that I'm remembering, this part of the New Year's kickoff is for Platinum and above. So like all of those peasants that couldn't make it to Platinum, which by the way, let me look at their income disclosure statement and see what the percentage is of Platinums in the company. These are the top four ranks, less than 0.1% because that's as low as it goes. They won't give you any more decimal points after that. Also, I'm getting sniffy. More than 99% of the entirety of Young Living is not here for this. They don't get to hear this. Over the last few weeks, you've been pushed to the limits. You've been you've been on calls, text messages, Zoom calls, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. You may be feeling when does it end? And although I can't tell you everything is perfect, I'm here to tell you that we got this. I'm here to tell you that together we will win. Tell me any other group of individuals that could handle what you have been thrown at. I'll wait, don't worry, I'll wait, tell me. Who can, who could handle that? We are in your corner fighting each day for you. Handle what? Turning out that your company that you've dedicated like years of your life to has just been lying to you? They act like this is like, oh, it's the haters fault. They did this to you. It's like, no. The reason the past year has been so hard is because so much of Young Living's bullshit got unearthed. And now you guys are trying to backtrack hard and changing things around and all of your people are leaving. Sir, <laughs> can you please take a little bit of the blame? Just be like, yeah, we messed up. Yeah, That's all we're asking. Just be like, we messed up. I mean, even that Jeff guy who was on the Zoom call video I made in November, and I think the video before that about the Young Living things too, that guy, I mean, he even said, we need to get your trust back. It's them. It's all them. And he's not going to sit there and admit and be like, you've been through so much this year and it's our fault and we're so sorry and we're going to make it better. No, he's just like, you guys have been through so much. <laughs> These haters just want to bring you down. No. Take some responsibility, Young Living. Come on. I have not been as confident as I am now in this fact so let us go fight and okay. continue this great partnership much love and respect double a what we saw when we talked about on november 1st about purposeful and intentional ways to help you build your business what did we see we saw the business grow right now you may be saying well it's november traditionally november for enrollments isn't high for young living it's a high sales day because of black friday because of cyber monday and because of product sales and because of people wanting to purchase product but we saw for a first time enrollments begin to increase we saw at the tail end of December, enrollments begin to increase. Over Do you know why that is? Starting November 1st, they were doubling the fast start bonus, which the fast start bonus basically is like they have premium starter kits or something like that that you can sell. So when you enroll someone and they buy one of those starter kits, you get a 50% bonus. So if they pay, I don't know what they are. They're usually like $200 or something, but I think they have a few that might be cheaper. Anyway, let's say that the starter kit that your recruit bought was $100. You're going to get a 50 $50 bonus from what I remember I'm pretty sure for that entire first month that that person is a young living member you m continue to make 50% of all of their purchases which is big admittedly in multi-level marketing companies most companies don't give you a 50% kickback. The thing is, is that it's only for a month whenever you recruit somebody. So what they've done here, and the reason they did this in the first place, is because 
they're trying to raise recruitment. They want more recruitment. They dropped this on all of their members on November 1st. And now they're like, hey, you know what? We're in such a good place right now that for the first time ever, we had more enrollments in November than we did the rest of the year. Yeah, because on November 1st, you guys doubled the fast start bonus as an incentive to recruit. Of course that happened. But that momentum can't stay forever. Yeah, you had a lot of people who were like, oh, that's a good deal. I can literally double the money I normally would make doing the same thing. Guess I'm going to go hard at it, you know? Yeah, of course that happened. If you're going to offer a generous incentive, people are going to take it. Go freaking figure, man. It's not rocket science. But they're acting like, oh, we're doing so much better as a company because we're bouncing back, basically. And it's like, no, it's because you release this new incentive and go figure, people want the money. So they're doing it. They're going hard at it. Why? Because we were intentional in delivering you tools training and education no, because that helped you, you drive the business. Oh my God. I'm sorry. I should have let him finish that sentence. Oh my God. That is not why. Sure. You gave them those things, but if you're going to sit here and be like, oh, it's because we are doing so much better and offering you training and stuff. No, it's because you doubled the fast start bonus. That was an incentive to recruit because they said, and you can go back and watch these videos if you want. I'll link them in the description, but they said, that their intention to basically save the company is to recruit more people and then to keep those recruits. And they were doing that by literally being like, everyone's like first orders are going to be treated with priority. Basically being like, we're going to fake the process so that everyone's first experience is a good one. But then if it's not your first order anymore, you don't get flagged in the system and you get treated like everybody else. So they're like, give all of our people more incentive to recruit and then make those people that have been recruited have a great first experience. Anything after that they don't give a shit. <laughs> Their entire focus is on recruiting more people and then trying to convince them to stay once they've got their slimy little claws dug into them. We have four pivotal moments throughout the year. We have New Year's kickoff, we have spring launch, we have convention, and we have holiday catalog or holiday launch. And at each one of those moments is when we set the course for the next 90 days in that segment. And if we don't start it off with the intention of delivering tools and incentives and an offering to you to help drive what happens, the quarter doesn't have that energy. It doesn't have that focus. So I'm here to commit to you today that 2023 will have that at each one of those moments. Again, it is literally because of the extra money you offer, dude, period. You can't keep raising the fast start bonus. Eventually that's going to fall off. Eventually recruits aren't going to keep coming in anymore because they just got done pushing all this shit. Like now's the best time ever to join Young Living. If you've ever thought about joining, now's the best time because you can get a, this huge jump start on your business. If you recruit people, you can get all this money and get 50% of everything they order. I don't think that this fast start bonus thing that they have going on is going to last forever. So there's that. Eventually they're gonna have to scale it back. I'm sure of it. Probably sometime this year, if I'm being totally honest. Yeah, they just got done spouting that from the rooftops. And then the people who were probably already considering becoming Young Living distributors heard that and they're like, oh, there's this incentive. And then they jumped on it because they had a good reason to. Now all those people are in Young Living and recruits are gonna slow down again. And people are probably going to leave again once they realize, yeah, that's cool that I can get a cool fast start bonus and everything if I recruit people right now. But it turns out it's actually kind of hard to recruit people. And then they don't end up going anywhere and they get stagnant and they quit again. Guarantee that we're gonna have a big group of people quitting Young Living within the next maybe six months because they're gonna be like, oh, well, yeah, that fast start bonus is pretty cool. Turns out I couldn't do anything with it though because I couldn't recruit anybody. Yep, you and most of the other people in the company, dude. I know there's always going to be people that will wanna take that energy from you, right? That's, that's never been in shortage here at Young Living. <laughs> But I want you to think about it a little bit differently. You want to know what fuels me? That. That garbage that comes at you to distract you, to change your mindset, to get you distracted off of what you're focused on. That fuels me. That, feel, that fills my cup. I want it to fill your cup. Let's go prove people wrong. Let's go show them why they're sad that they don't have this. Yeah, do they it. I dare you. Energy energy. They don't have these leaders. They don't have this community. They certainly don't have these products. They certainly don't have the opportunity that we have. So let's use that fuel this year to be purposeful about driving that energy every single month. We're here to help. We're here to help build and drive that energy with you throughout the year. Now, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to bring up Rita Morrow, who's going to talk to you about how fast are, how what we launched on November 1st, how it That's actually changed about. the lives of people, real, real life people within Young Living, show to you why that mattered. 
show you show to you why that mattered for people within the organization that used it to build the energy that they needed from the announcement day to the end of November and how we're going to continue to do this throughout the year. So please give a round of applause for Rita Morrill, Senior Manager of Training and Education. Thank you. And I hope we've told you enough how much we appreciate you traveling and being with us. I feel like the building is going to feel a little lonely when you leave. So please come back and visit. But thank you again for being here. Now, like I said, we get to travel and we get to support a lot of your events. And one thing that we've realized is that people just need that direction. We were talking to someone and recently in Florida, um, Leon City and I were speaking to just a few members, different ranks, trying to figure out what they needed help with in their business. And it was just interesting to see that there was no problem with the passion behind the products. They had their favorite products. They knew exactly what they love about this company. But then we said, okay, how are you sharing about becoming a brand partner? What are you doing to share the opportunity? Dead silence. And we're like, you're not sharing the opportunity to be a brand partner. Have you guys seen that in your business? Yeah. We need a little bit more confidence there. And so that's our job is to create a little bit more of these systems and tools and bring you exciting things and make it simple. And that's what we did on November 1st. So I'm going to talk a little bit more about that today. But these observations, pay attention to what your people need. Now, one thing that we've really seen that's been a key factor to success is consistency. We want to prevent this Black Friday mentality where, yes, again, Allie's like, yes, please, where you know that Black Friday, I'm good, I'm confident, I'm going to get lots of enrollments. And then we see people trickle off, take a little break. We just see you know, the ebbs and flows of business throughout the year. And that's okay, right? It, it, maybe one month is stronger for you, but... I want you to think about what consistency this year will do for your business. So one of the biggest focuses I would really make sure you're confident in this year is our help to get to concept. We launched our whole program was called Start, Share, Succeed. So this was the share portion of this program. Now, the beautiful thing about this is number one, we can help people get their products paid for. You don't need to jump in and start sharing about Young Living Comp Plan. I don't know, do, does anyone do that like right away? Like, let me sit you down and break down the comp plan for you. I would assume most of you are sharing your favorite products right from the get-go. So this is important that this is a simple approach. When you can tell your team, have people help those new enrollments get their products paid for first. Then you can go a little deeper into how they can make some extra income. The other great thing is that this is a simplified track to jumpstart their business. So it sets them up for success with a proper structure. So you might remember this structure here, but if they were to start with a starter bundle, if you can get someone on your team to have them enroll too, just focus on the two. And then those enroll too, they've surpassed that 500 ODB requirement for STAR. This is a good place to start spilling some D. So in my last video, it was a MLM Top Fails video, one of you guys sent to my Google Drive some screenshots that a Young Living Royal Crown Diamond, I'm pretty sure, was posting about their enrollments for the year of our Lord 2022. I was told that this person's team had 8,000 people on it. And what those screenshots uncovered, really, is that out of a team of 8,000 people, oh my god, how many was it? Wasn't it like 13? or something like a very very small amount of people had even recruited 24 people last year and that's out of her entire team of 8,000 people you even had some royal crown diamonds or at least like one royal crown diamond on that list of people who didn't even do that meaning they didn't recruit two people a month the whole help to get to kind of thing it's literally just like you recruit two people and then they recruit two people and da, 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 da. that can only go on for so long there's a finite amount of people on this planet you can only recruit so many of them and they want you to do this every Every month they're like oh yeah it's it's a totally sustainable model this is how you're going to build your business and you're going to build a sustainable business with our oils and shit just all you have to do is to, it's so doable it is so easy to do blah 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 okay well we saw screenshots from a royal crown diamonds team with 8,000 people on her team and less than 0.1 percent of people were able to even recruit just two people a month let alone more than that pay attention to how she's going to talk about how easy this is like this is all you need to do all you have to do is help your team recruit two people per month. Okay, it's not that easy. And you have people who are the top rank of Young Living who can't even pull this off. It is not as easy as they're going to make you think it is. It's just not. It sounds easy, but it's not. Okay, let's listen to how easy they're going to say this is. Because listen, they're just like, oh, if you just do this for like two months or whatever, like you're going to be star. I think it's 11% of the company is star or above. And I'm pretty sure the ones that are at star, it's like 7% of the company. And then like, well, the numbers go down from there. No, it's very hard to do this. 11% of the company, people that are recruited into Young Living are ever able to leave the brand partner, like first rank to get up to star distributor. Well, instead of, you know, in your team meetings, trying to focus on maybe your 
really trying to improve on social media marketing and customer acquisition, and then you're trying to make sure everyone's following up, make sure you have a foundational concept and start strong there. Start with the two, then maybe spend a little bit more time training on how to elevate their businesses in other ways. But if you can get them to focus on that attainable goal, I think we're going to see a lot of success. As you're thinking about it's impossible this year, I want you to think about this. What would your business look like if every brand partner in your organization introduced oils to two families each month? I'm assuming impossible. your organization might change a little bit. Your OGD might change a little bit. So think about that. If every single brand partner did that, what would it look like? And on a bigger scale, what would our world and communities look like? We've talked about this this morning. This is so much bigger. Our vision needs to be bigger. Like Ben was saying, we're trying to get oils in so many homes. The money's great, right? The money helps, gives us an enjoyable life and we can do more and share more and do things like contribute to our goals with the foundation. We need to keep this bigger vision too. Okay, who likes numbers? Does anyone like looking at graphs, data? Okay, got some people in the room. Yeah, show us the data. <laughs> Let's talk numbers and look at what's happened so far since we changed Fast Start. So in North America, between October and November, we've seen a 119% increase month over month from October to November. Granted, there, we did have our holiday sale, but keep in mind, as we look at some other data, we're going to really focus in just on fast start. Average earnings. What else did we see? This almost doubled on average. That's incredible. Wait, <laughs> she said from October to November, right? Or was it November to December? I don't know. She was like, this is amazing. Like people's profits, like the money that they were making almost doubled. It's like, you doubled the fast start bonus. Yeah, that's what happens. You double the amount of money they make. And then the graph supports that. I cannot believe how like they're really trying to buckle down on this and be like, look, it's working. Like all of our stuff is working. It's like, yeah, no shit. You doubled how much the bonus is. And then over the course of a month, people's income double. <gasps> what? Like, it's really not that shocking, dude. Like, what the hell? <laughs> so stupid. Holy crap. But again, I'm telling you right now. Yeah, this happened in November. It is now January, the beginning of January. They've had two months to like work this shit out. Two months. And they're like, look at how amazing this is. It's only been two months. Like, see if you can keep this momentum going through the rest of the year. I guarantee it won't happen. What are you gonna do? Increase the fast start bonus again? Try to tell me that that's gonna be sustainable. It's not. Young Living is already, in Mary Young's own words, operating at a loss. And they're trying to bounce back from that. They can't just keep like throwing money at people because they don't have money to throw at people. Now I have a few case studies for you to look at. I've been looking at what people have been earning just in this short period of time, but it's really interesting to see how big of an impact this is making. So just keep in mind the following studies I'm going to show you, they only include fast start bonuses paid on the level one payments in month one. So this is going to be your personal enrollments or with compression, anyone like compression that we introduced? <laughs> anyone that got compressed and they're now your level one. Compression means say that you are an upline and someone in your downline recruits somebody. So the fast start bonuses, you get the 50% if you're the one to recruit somebody, but your upline also gets a percentage of that. I forget what it is. But in order to get fast start bonuses and stuff, you have to be active. It would, meaning like, I, I forget what it takes to be active. I think it's like 100 PV or something, which can cost probably around like 200 bucks bucks, maybe less, maybe more. You have to have that in your personal volume, meaning either you make that much in sales to customers or you purchase those yourself. Those both contribute to your PV. If you did not do that, then you do not qualify for that 50% bonus and you do not get it. Guess who gets it? Your upline does. And then, <laughs> so you, you get compressed, you get taken out of the equation, even though you're the one who did the work, suddenly the upline that wasn't going to be your level two is suddenly your level two and you, it, it, your upline's the level one, you get nothing. It's not wild. She's like, who loves the compression that we introduced? Like, isn't that great? Yeah, because again, this is a presentation for platinum and above. So they're all the up, up, up lines, right? Of course they love this because they have people in their downlines who are making these bonuses and not being able to collect them because they're not qualified. So these up lines, yeah, they are making more money. Yeah, off the work of their downline. They didn't do anything except recruit these people. That's all they did. And then those people go out and recruit and then don't get those bonuses and it gets compressed up to them. Insane. Yeah, they love that. They absolutely love that you introduce this. Okay, so anyone is a silver leader. And as you can see, she was enrolling, you know, two, one, and then November hits, hustled a little bit more, stepped it up, and she enrolled eight. 
you can see her level one payment in October was $16. In November, it was $422. Okay, because again, November 1st is when they doubled the amount of money that you get when you recruit someone and sell a premium starter kit. It's shocking to me how much they're unwilling to admit that like you offered this incentive and people went for it because it was more money. It was actually going to double their income that they received when they recruited someone. Of course this is going to happen. Of course they love this shit and of course it worked out this way. No shit. When you offer somebody money and you say you just, all you got to do is do this and we're going to give you double the amount of money we were giving you before. Yeah, people are going to go hard at that. <laughs> it's not shocking and it's not rocket science, but these people are like, look at, see, we're growing. We're on the up and out of this bullshit. No, because this can only last for so long. This is not going to last forever. This is momentum right now. That's going to fade off eventually. And then you're going to have to find something else to do. And keep in mind, this is level one. This is not level two. This is not level three and this is not her total earnings how incredible the increase in payout was 2467 percent on fast start yeah we like that we want to see that right <laughs> yes all right one more example here gold leader she had a really great summer she had five and ten enrollments then started trickling down a little bit so that two three what's really interesting here in october she had three and then she did less enrollments in november she had two her increase in payout was still 121 percent with less enrollments. I think that's really key there. Less enrollments, but more purchases. Like this is situational and this is not across the board. <laughs> and one more example for you here as Silver Leader, pretty consistent, just enrolling about one a month. November stepped it up, did six enrollments. She went from $27 in October on her fast start level one, went up to $406. So the increase was 1,385%. Isn't that incredible? What an opportunity we have. Shocking. And did she enroll 20 people? Are, are we expecting that? No, you would like we that, want though. you to focus on helping to get that too. set them up for success. Start with something really attainable. Again, this is not obtainable. And we saw the reports that that upline shared, whoever the fuck they were out of an 8,000 person team, less than 0.1% of people were able to recruit two people a month. And all of those people were high level within the pyramid. If they can't do it, then you sure as shit can't do it, dude. Come on. One of the best resources that I would encourage you to use this year is our leader development team. They are incredible. I work with them hand in hand and we've gone to travel and work with so many of your teams to help them and hold them accountable. I think it's a different level with when you're actually looking at their business and checking in on them. I think that's a whole other level that can help people. So to give you a better idea of what this team does, I'm going to introduce Leon Atsidi. He's our executive director of leader development, and he's going to tell you, oh, and we're also going to invite someone from our us and latino sales too and also leon will talk a little bit about canada also has a specialized team so martin moreno is also going to speak on our teams but thank you so much we're really excited about this year and without further ado leon Atsidi. man alive what is up diamond plus leaders how's everybody doing um i'm excited to talk a little bit about what our teams do we are built to help and add that added level of support to you and your teams our team is focused on helping you helping your teams achieve their goals working towards those goals and hitting them, whether it is a rank advancement, whether it's to hit a bonus, an incentive, an incentive trip, our team is built specifically to do that, to help you work towards that goal of hitting those, those benchmarks or those goals. The other great thing I love that this team does is this team is focused in on making sure that we provide platforms for you guys. How many times have we called you out and invited you to speak or train to be a part of a masterclass, a mastermind, a business training to support leaders in the field. I just realized that their Zoom name is Seed to Seal. Not Young Living, not New Year's kickoff. It's just Seed to Seal, which I'm like, why are you still buckling down on this shit? We know Seed to Seal wasn't what you said it was. We know that it was a lie. Like, why are you still putting all your eggs in that basket, dude? We partner up with you, we lock arms with you, um, and we were able to go ahead and find out all the great things that you do. And like, hey, we need you to train the rest of the field on, on that. And we get to do that with you. We love traveling, being out in your area, spending time with you, and really locking arms and being that accountability partner with you. Locking this is our team arms. here in the U.S. The U.S. Latino market, the Latinos are 20% of the population of this country and growing fast, right? Every single one of you have Latinos in your team, Spanish speakers. And Latinos, not all the 20% of our population, they speak English, a lot of them, but they still love connecting with their culture, with their roots. And, and they have a slightly different way of doing things, of thinking in some things. We're absolutely here to help you and support you. Help them be able to understand and participate in this business in a way that resonates with their culture, with them. To be able to provide trainings in their language, to be able to support them. And all the things that Leon has talked about, we have a team that uh, can do the same to help you and your teams to be able to help these people, support them, and help them reach their goals. Um, lots of times people think, well, the people who speak Spanish, they're, they're, they're the poor people. 
just to give you an idea, if you take the money that the Latinos manage and spend in this country and you separate it as if it were its own country, it would be the seventh strongest economy of the world. He did not just say that. Again, they're all just, oh, sorry, Pippi. <laughs> She's like, you're getting a little loud for me. Um, excuse me. This whole thing is just them being like, here's how bigoted we are. <laughs> We're gonna just put it out there for our platinums and above to see and nobody else. <laughs> Oh, cover your butt, Pip. That's gross. Bye. Those pesky haters, those anti-MLMers, they're never gonna see that. Um, here we are. Yeah, hi. Will you people ever learn? You can't just go around saying, like, most people think that if you speak Spanish, you're poor. I'm sorry, what? I'm sorry, you did not just say that, sir. I think we're about to see a lot of racial, I guess, bigotry coming out here. There's a lot of stereotypes being thrown around. Buckle in, guys. I get the feeling this is gonna get bad. So we think about opening countries and being the first and running around the world to start a market. You have a huge opportunity right here with the market. Latinos are networkers. Uh, they do, they love to have fun. If you can do business, it has to be a fun business it? activity. There's a lot of, if you come around any of our meetings at a convention or any of the, the times we get together, there's always more yelling, more laughing, and it usually ends in dancing. So, so there's a slightly different approach to business, but uh, we're really excited to be able, we've spent the last two years putting together an amazing team. This person in the chat's all like, so I've decided I'm coming to the Latino market. Were you like actively avoiding them before? And now that you know you can make money off of them, that they take up 20% of the American population and that if you put them all together, that they can be, what did he say? Like the seventh largest economy in the world or some shit like that with the Latinos. So you're just gonna sit there and admit that before you didn't give a shit about Latinos. But now that you know you can make money off of them, you're, you're gonna buckle down and do it, right? I mean, I get that they, said that like sarcastically but it's like no <laughs> i think you're just admitting to something and making it sound like a joke make sure that you use our team we love working with you guys we this love chat is you fascinating you right now here. we appreciate every one of you thank you so much with that i'll turn the time what am i doing with people who don't yell or laugh every person regardless of their skin color is capable of yelling and laughing what does that mean do you guys need to stretch your legs are you feeling okay i think you've been in your seats for about an hour does anyone want to stand Okay, stand up. Let's stand up for just a minute. Get our wiggles out of us. I know when we're in the office, we have to do the same. We sit behind our desks all day um, and it, you have to get those times where you can stand up, stretch and just walk. So thanks for taking a minute. I'm not gonna do the bobsledding that Ben knows really, really well. I'm just trying to get a feel for how many people are actually in this room. And I'm like, that's not a lot. And obviously this isn't a convention. This is their new year's kickoff, which I don't think they normally have a huge crowd for that. But I'm like, who are these people? How did they get there? Did they have to be invited? Were the tickets like stupid expensive and only so many people? Because with convention, we usually see with Young Living, they have like a whole production. They have stadiums, like they'll <laughs> rent out something that can fit like 30,000 people. Meanwhile, here, I'm like, there's maybe a hundy. I just wonder who these people are. Maybe they're corporate or something. I don't know. Or maybe these are just the only platinums and above who were able to make it to this. Or maybe this is all of them. Because we all we know is when we look at the income disclosure statement, it literally just says platinum and above each rank makes up less than 0.1% of the company. There's no numbers to tell us how many there actually are. I wonder if I can figure out how many Royal Crown Diamonds there are in Young Living. There can't be that many. I want to kind of kick us off with a story. And this is a story that's very, very personal to me. So I'm going to try to get through it without any tears. So bear with me, please. Um, this is my beautiful family right here behind me. And um, in, let's see, January of 2020, uh, my husband had COVID. Okay, real quick. Holy shit. Okay, we're, we're just getting right into it. We're going to start hearing some COVID claims. They have a actual Royal Crown Diamond recognition list, and there's quite a few on there. A lot of MLMs, it's like you get to the top of the company and there's like two people there. This one seems to be significantly more than two. <laughs> like enough that I'm like, I could probably sit here and count them, but I don't want to. That being said, I mean, it's not a lot in the grand scheme of things, because I think there's hundreds of thousands of people who are in Young Living. Well, a few weeks later, he still wasn't feeling well. And a few more weeks pass by and he calls me and he says, I think I have an inner ear infection. We call a doctor. Okay, wait, real quick though. We heard some wild and crazy claims coming from Young Living and doTERRA and like any of these health MLMs, but a lot of these distributors in that were high up in these companies were making some seriously wackadoodle and false <laughs> statements regarding how their essential oils can help with 
COVID, long COVID, recovery, prevention, things like that. And I'm sitting here like, well, okay, let's see. Your dude got COVID. He wasn't feeling well. It's like, how come your essential oils didn't stop that? I thought that that was like one of the big pushes, that, like the big marketing pushes that happened in 2020 is that like everyone was running off talking about how you can protect yourself from COVID with essential oils. And not just in Young Living. Again, this goes for most MLMs that sell any kind of healthcare, anything. He still got COVID, huh? Guess it's not that effective in preventing it. Or, you know, if he's not feeling well, uh, I guess it wasn't that great in managing symptoms either. Let's check it out. He's like, I feel like my COVID symptoms just never went away. So I got him an appointment. He didn't have an inner ear infection. And um, the doctor said, if you really aren't feeling well, based on the symptoms he's had, let's do a CAT scan. So he goes in for a scan. Another week passes. They call us and they say, you know, there's a, there's a gray area in the scan. We should do an MRI. Another week passes. We do the MRI. And... The results of that MRI changed our lives. So this is me trying to not be too emotional, but <laughs> with that, here we go. Um, they saw a brain story. tumor, and oh, it was in his right frontal lobe, about walnut size, so it had been there for a long time. And um, from the time that we found that brain tumor, it was a whirlwind. We had to get um, and find surgeons to remove it, and um, we did. We found a really amazing surgeon from Huntsman that's just right here in Utah. And um, from that time, from the time. Oh, Utah. So I wonder if they're at the Mona Utah farm right now, or uh, I don't know, they might have multiple farms in Utah, or maybe they just have one. I'm not sure. But I wonder if that's where they're at right now. So that's why like, it would have been like invitation only, like the stage is pretty small. I wonder if that's where this is being filmed and broadcasted from. We found it to a surgery. It was about a week and a half, two weeks. And it was a whirlwind. In fact, it wasn't until I was sitting in the waiting room while he was having surgery that I realized how kind of the weight of what had happened. Please tell me that she's not about to be like, uh, Young Living helped shrink the size of his tumor or whatever. Because like, if you guys remember, Netflix came out with, it was a series about like weird health things. What was it called? It was a really good series, actually. It was a lot of like debunking quack science, pretty much. And they had their first episode was about essential oils. It was called Unwell, two years ago, almost two and a half years ago. Damn. Okay, so Netflix came out with a series called Unwell. And yeah, like I said, it was about debunking medical things. There was a story. Now, albeit this was a doTERRA distributor who was talking about this. Um, they, But in that series, they do mention Young Living. They talk about the Young Living lawsuit. They interview Young Living distributors and stuff like that. So this essentially applies, right? In my opinion. This doTERRA chick is like, I had a brain, was it a brain tumor or brain cancer or something like that? When she was a young kid, like 12 or 13 years old or something. And she swears, cause she's now a doTERRA distributor. She swears that her essential oils cured her. Like, I think it was an inoperable brain tumor. And she swears that because of the essential oils she got better it shrunk the tumor it went away like people legitimately believe this and people legitimately go around spouting this shit and there's no scientific backing at all to those claims so i swear i mean she better not be going off on this shit also um my daughter got a bunch of slime for christmas and while i was thinking i was gonna pull a julie joe and just sit here and play with some slime while we watch this i can't get this oh there it goes <laughs> this is my kid's slime i'm just gonna be squishing it over here i was the only one sitting in that waiting room getting a call from the or every hour and I didn't realize that at first, but I'm looking around and I'm realizing every hour I'm getting a call that they're just updating me on his vitals. They're not giving me any details, but that he's doing okay. Um, a six hour surgery turns into eight and a half hours. I'm sitting there watching as other people, you know, come in, they're waiting. I'm chatting with a few of them. You know, some are getting open heart surgery or waiting for someone that's getting open heart surgery. And I'm realizing as they're leaving, their nurse is coming in and letting them know, hey, you know, your loved one's ready, go back. You know, you can go and meet them now. Well, after my eight and a half hours, I look up to see the surgeon walking to, to grab me. And instead of saying, hey, let's go see your husband, he asked me to step into a room. And again, sorry. And what we had learned is um, they did remove the tumor 100%, but during the process, okay, um, cool. they had paralyzed his left side. So Yikes. we spent the next two weeks up in critical care and then four more weeks in inpatient physical therapy. Now the positive side, so let's stop the tears. The positive side, he is walking again. Very exciting. Yes. <laughs> That's great. Uh, he's incredible. So he has powered through with the power of essential oils. 
Oh, we not oh, 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 no, you did not. No, you did not. Is she suggesting that with the power of essential oils, her husband was able to regain the ability to walk? Literally, that's what something Mark St. Ange said uh, from the Boo Days, if you guys remember. Black Oxygen Organics, the Dirt MLM. Libido. Mark St. Ange literally said that in his early days of working at like some German mud spa or something like that, he witnessed people regain the ability to walk from his magic mud. Wild, right? So now uh, this is what I'm hearing. I mean, I'll press play and see how else she spins this, but I'm like, are you really going to sit here and try to tell me that through the power of essential oils, while the doctors operated on his brain tumor, he was able to regain the ability to walk? Is she talking like, does he have the help of a cane? Probably, right? I don't know. Let's listen. Emotionally, I would not have gotten through that time. Emotionally, I would not have gotten through that time without essential oils. Are you serious? There's no way. Th that's the dumbest shit I've ever heard. I get it. Like, if, if it helps you, great. But it seems like to put your entire emotional and mental health on essential oils and being like, the only reason I've made it through this is because of those oils. No. Give yourself some more credit, dude. We know that these oils, you know, maybe they're a safety blanket and you need something to point to to be like it was that but it's like you're not giving yourself enough credit that's something hard to go through like of course anyone whose spouse ends up having a brain tumor yeah that's awful dude that sucks and I wouldn't wish that on my worst enemy I wouldn't that's terrifying and I'm sure it was very hard for her and her family but to be like if it weren't for the essential oils I would not have made it through and he powered through with the power of essential oils he powered through the oh my god God, what the hell? I've been with Young Living for 20 years. I will never go a day without essential oils now because of that experience. So I do have a point to sharing all of this. It's not just about the emotions or about me, but I want you to know that I value oils and I want to do everything I can to make sure that you have the products that you need to share Young Living. I understand why you're out there sharing it. I understand why this is important to you. And it's important to me too. It's so important to me. Um, with that being said, so marketing's focus is this year. What we want to focus on, what we want to support you in is first, seed to sell storytelling. Ben set that up really nicely. Seed to sell storytelling is very, very important to us. Number two, we need to align our product stories. We need to give you more information and more content on our products than we ever have. And number three, we need to protect Young Living's brand. And I'm passionate about that. I promise you guys, it matters to me. It hurts me deeply when we have the haters talking about Young Living in a poor way. And so even though you may call me and I give you a very professional cordial response, know that emotionally I'm pissed and I'm hang up that phone. And I, <laughs> ah! when we get off those calls with you, we sidebar about how mad we are. Confirmation that we are affecting young living period. Cause we're the haters they're talking about. Okay. And it it's so frustrating to me that like we are considered haters, right? But literally all we're doing is spreading the word about their lies. We found everything. He worked with Gary Young on product formulations and stuff like that, marketing, under oath claimed that less than 1% of their oils come from Young Living farms that they own. <laughs> that was all discovered by doing research. Like, it's not that hard to understand. We're not haters because we're doing due diligence and sharing what we find. Do I hate Young Living? Yeah, I do, because it has indirectly harmed people. And you know what? Fuck it. Literally, it has harmed people. There are plenty of class action lawsuits against Young Living right now, or where people are financially harmed. Uh, we saw in the Netflix documentary, that Unwell series I was talking about, that episode about essential oils has stories about people who were physically harmed by essential oils. And not only that, We've heard stories. Now, again, I don't know how much evidence there is and how much blame you can put on essential oils here, but we have heard stories about people who might be like in charge of like their elderly mother or father or something. And they're so sick of taking all these medications to keep them alive and they decide to try something else. They're like, you know what? I'm not gonna take my medications anymore. I'm gonna rely on nature and essential oils. And they die. That happens. That has happened before. And not just with Young Living. I'm sure, you know, it's happened with doTERRA too. If I had to guess, I would say that's probably true. Yeah, this shit harms people, but we're haters. So to answer the question, do I hate Young Living? Yeah, I do. I hate these essential oil companies who just keep letting their distributors get away with all of these false promises of, of health and wellness and all these things. There's no scientific backing and people are being harmed by it. Yeah, I hate Young Living. So sure, call me a hater, but 
before I'm a hater, I'm a reporter, I'm a researcher, I'm a storyteller. I tell about what's going on behind closed doors and she's just like, I'm so mad that these haters talk about it. Like, it's like, we're not making shit up. We're looking at court documents. We're looking at import Yeti. We're looking at other of those import export websites that literally show that Young Living has been importing pallets of lavender oil, drums full of orange oil, other essential oils. We've seen testing results from third third-party laboratories confirming that there were oils that were cut with synthetics. Like over the years, we've seen all this stuff. We're just out here speaking the truth and trying to get more people to hear it. And she's like, it makes me so mad. It makes me so mad that we're being held accountable by these haters. Dude, just like do the right thing in the first place. You don't even have to go through any of this shit. If you don't start your company with the intent of being money hungry monsters, then maybe you won't have such a hard time having to defend defend yourselves. Like just start off being honest in the first place. Don't even do that. I'm sorry we come across very corporate sometimes. Um, the intent really is, is to make sure that you guys feel comfortable, that we're moving forward in the right way, but we do get mad and we do talk about how do we address this in the best way. So that's the third thing we're going to do. What I want to talk to you about right now is seed to sale. So let's, let's dive into that. Here we go. Um, seed to sale was created by Gary Young, clear back at the beginning of Young Living. He created it because he wanted to make sure that we had the highest quality essential oils from the time the seed was planted in the ground until that oil bottle was sealed. Okay, exactly. This is what they've been saying for the past almost 30 years when Gary came up with this shit, seed to seal. It's exactly what it sounds like. You plant the seed in the ground, you have your hands all over it through the entire process until it's bottled. And that's what came out this year is that it's not true. That is not what happened. Now, let me put it this way. Maybe, quite possibly maybe, when Gary Young started Young Living in 1990, whatever the fuck it was, like 90 94. But then again, like there's also like their website says the 90s, but in a Zoom call, Mary Young was all like, oh yeah, back in the 80s, he wrote this Young Living branded, I don't fucking know. The timeline there is all blurred and weird as well. Hard to know when this company was actually fucking started, but I'll give them the benefit of the doubt that maybe Gary Young did intentionally start Seed to Seal to be what he said it would be. He owned a farm at that point. I think they have six now that they own and operate on their own. And then like a bunch of other partner farms that they've really never gone into detail on. But anyway, you know, maybe the products he was offering, maybe they were all grown and distilled, planted, bottled, whatever the fuck at his facilities that he owned. But as they grew, they kept the lie going, but obviously started importing things and obviously started being dishonest. And they didn't change their story about what seed to seal actually meant. They just kept going. This is what Gary Young intended, even though we're not doing it anymore. But then at the same time, like Gary Young died, I think in 2018. So he really kept that lie going for a long time. Like he had to have known at a certain point that they were going to start importing oils and stuff. So even if originally the seed to seal plan was that Gary Young had in his head was that from the moment the seeds planted into the ground to the moment the bottle is sealed, maybe that was his original intention, but it didn't stay that way and they just kept going with it. They kept going forward. That's the benefit of the doubt I'll give them. Maybe it started out that way, but it sure as shit is not that way now. And Gary Young knew that. He's a charismatic cult leader, okay? Or was anyway. I mean, fuck, he still is. Even though he's dead, they carry on his legacy and talk about him like he's Jesus. But Gary has always been more interested in acclaim. He would say he's a doctor when he wasn't actually a doctor. He wanted to be respected. He wanted people to love him, to follow him, to listen to him, to learn from him, even though everything he was saying was not based on any actual science. He's always been that guy. And, and of course, what comes with all that money, of course. I do not believe for a second that even though they say like, oh yeah, Gary used essential oils to walk again after his logging accident or whatever the fuck. Yeah, they're gonna say that, of course. I don't believe it. When they tell Gary Young's story over and over and over again, they never acknowledge the fact that like when he had his logging accident, he was in the hospital. He was receiving more modern care. And then he was just like requesting smoothies instead of actual food food. And then he learned about essential oils there. Like they always make up this lie. Like, oh, Gary healed himself through the power of essential oils. No, he was in the hospital and was receiving professional medical care. It's all just a fucking lie. It's so frustrating. Anyway, sorry, we'll keep going. I, j I feel like they're gonna talk about seed to seal and I'm gonna be pausing a lot and just like going off about the bullshit. So since the inception of Seed to Seal, our product offering has drastically changed. Right. It is not just oils, it is personal care items. It's the items that you have in your home. It's nutritional supplements. The oil demand has drastically increased. Mm -hmm. So not only are we 
apologies. Not only are we um, selling essential oils, but we're selling a vast amount of products. You're selling a lifestyle. Selling a lot more than we ever anticipated. So uh -huh. what that means is that seed to seal as the seed in the ground to sealing that bottle is a philosophy that we've applied applied across all of our product offerings. Oh, it's a philosophy so the definition now. The of seed to seal has become a lot greater than just oils. I think that's an important thing to note. It is something that's so much bigger than essential oils. So is she admitting that, yeah, it has changed over the years? Yeah, it originally was supposed to literally mean from seed to seal, but our products have changed, our offering has changed, and it's just impossible to do that now. But that's been going on for years, and only in 2022 were we able to confirm that seed to seal isn't, I guess, at least what it used to be. I mean, this, what she just said kind of confirms that to me and she's trying to kind of beat around the bush and be like what you guys keep saying seed to seal is um actually it hasn't been that for almost 30 years quality standards and those guiding principles that were created continue to maintain and are continuing across all of our product offering so what i need to do as a marketing and the marketing team we need to tell you those stories we need to make sure that you can go out and talk about seed to seal in the ways that we need to talk about it so here's how we're doing that right now what's a lie you're starting to see some of these seed to seal storytelling videos uh, there's three types of videos that we are launching or have launched. Okay, looking at this here, sourcing science and standard stories, fine. Here's the thing, Young Living owns six farms. So yes, they are produ- We know that they are producing and distilling and growing and what and bottling some oils. But according to court documents that were testified under oath by someone who used to work so closely to Gary Young himself, confirmed that out of all the products that they sell, less than 1% is coming from those actual farms. So while it's easy for, you know, even now to this day, yeah, they're still producing stuff even to this day. And after owning six farms now instead of the original one, it's easy to like film these videos and be like, yeah, look, look at, I mean, here's our source right here. Here, here is our farm. It's like, okay, but you're not telling us how much of your product comes from those sources. We know that it's not a lot and you're not gonna ever tell us that. Like, I dare you to fucking tell us, Young Living. Like, give us a number, say, we stick to seed to seal how, mu how much percentage of the time. But we know that they're important a bunch of shit from overseas, China, definitely. And fine, import some raw plant materials and stuff. But no, sometimes they're just straight up importing the oil already made from overseas. Like they had no hands on that at all. And so they cover it up as like, well, those are our partner farms. They're seed to seal certified. What does that mean? They literally have never elaborated on that. Even to this day, they've admitted that they have partner farms, but these like, these places they're importing from aren't necessarily farms they're like companies i mean sure they obviously get their plant material from a farm but it's more complicated than that it's more convoluted than that and they won't admit to it but again here we have all in the details behind the scenes with farmers and scientists okay yeah we know you have them but these guys all the stuff they're filming and being like look at this is where our products come from yeah less than one percent you are showing us the production behind less than one percent of your oils so while they're gonna sit here and be like try to make it seem like this is where our stuff comes from it's not it's where a very small percentage of their stuff comes from let us see your partner farms out in china out in all other places in the world let's see those no you're not gonna show us those right because you're not there you don't have your hands on all the seeds and shit like you can't show us that wonder why you'll see a lot more coming towards the end of the year but this is what you're getting from us in the first six months of 2023 Good so first of all Overview seed to sale stories. This talks about the exclusive things that we do on Young Living's farms that no one else can claim. It talks about our sourcing science and standards, which we have leading industry standards. I'm so excited to start telling those stories a lot more with our- Yeah, please tell us more. And also while you're at it, can you like release some test results to prove that you have those standards and that the, the products that you're putting out also have those standards? Again, they literally had some oils cut with synthetics that were proven by third-party testing but they're just like oh no everything we put out gets tested before it gets put in a bottle okay well how did you miss that what are your standards can you prove to us that these standards are higher than any other competitor because that's what you keep saying so a lot to be told under c to sale those videos drop monthly if not more frequently we're also launching a new series that's called all in the details this is very very raw social content this is content like you're seeing from chris Power bank. We want you to go behind the scenes with our farmers and our scientists. We want you to know that when we say we have the highest quality standards, we mean it. 
And you need to meet the people that make it happen to ensure that you're getting the highest quality products. Prove it. Um, and then lastly, we've launched the Farm to Label series with Mark Bartlett. The intent of this video series Mark was to, bring, to allow you to see Mark as he comes along learning about Young Living's products. Um, with that being said, I'm going to dive into each of these three video types in a little more detail. I told you what C. DeSil was. I'm going to show you a video, which has not quite launched yet, but you will um, be able to access Exclusive. it on YouTube after today, just because I wanted to make sure it was in your hands. And then you'll see communications in the next couple of weeks on that. So this also cues us up for something that we're going to be sharing this afternoon with Colby and the foundation. Pine corn is very unique. It's like almost a wild grain, very low yield, but highest nutritional value you can find. It's been a tradition for over 8,000 years in this area. Einkorn was able to grow here and it stayed in the rotation of the lavender. And einkorn really stayed alive only because of the necessity to do rotation. And even people didn't even know how important einkorn was, so they didn't think anybody would be interested in it. Gary was searching for nutritional products. He used to go to the Middle East looking for ancient grains. Mm -hmm. And I remember once he came here, we were on the farm. He said, what are you cultivating here? I said, we cultivate einkorn. And he said, I've been looking for this specific grain for many years, and I didn't even know I was growing it on my farm in France. I'm sorry, what? Okay, the iron corn thing is, they, so they like sell it. It's like a, a different kind of grain, like a wheat or barley or something, but it's called iron corn. It's like in that family of stuff, I guess. There are a lot of places that sell it. Gary Young did not discover this shit, and he's like, oh, I, I had no idea where to get it. That doesn't make any sense. So Gary, when he gets excited, he gets excited. <laughs> Let's go for it. We have to promote the production of iron corn. Oh, wait, hold on. Someone in the chat here says, so seed to seal is a philosophy. We have to be careful about sharing our experiences on our corporate farms and what we witness firsthand as what we know happens in every place our oil might come from. Okay, admitting that it doesn't just come from their farms. I think that has gotten us in trouble. Uh-huh. Yeah, there are graphics that I, I know I shared in one of the videos when we were talking about seed to seal stuff. There are graphics that people were posting around social media that were literally just saying this like, oh, no, it's only grown on our farms. We're the only essential oil company that owns our farms and we're this and that. Like saying all this shit as if it is all encompassing of all of Young Living's products. And that's just not true. What this person's saying is true. And this is how it really should be looked at. We can't just like go off and say that just because some of our oils are coming from our farms doesn't mean everything applies to this it's like okay but it is young living's fault in that way because they just kept them believing it and until they get called out then they're like no guys we never said any of that stuff and it's like yeah but you never corrected anyone either uh anyway uh seed to seal is a philosophy based on our experiences and practices on our personally controlled farms which again make up less than one percent of the products they actually sell that experience translates to knowledge and wisdom which helps us test appropriately again we We've never seen those testing results, so how do you know they're doing it appropriately, scientifically, legitimately? We don't know what the results are. We don't know how they're doing it. That last part doesn't make sense. But at the beginning here, it's like, yeah, can you not apply seed to seal to every product that Young Living sells? Because we know a majority of the raw material that makes up those products does not come from Young Living's farms. We just know that as a fact. It just doesn't. Very allowed for einkorn to be known a little bit more worldwide. And so it became more knowledgeable. And then myself and the other farmers, when we started, you know, seeing the nutritional analysis and all that, we're like, wow. It's a This grain. is the only cereal that has all the amino acids. So you have the perfect input of protein thanks to white corn. Wheat will, you know, it's, it's so different Prove than the original it. state it was in nature. Einkorn, on the other hand, it's never been hybridized. It's never been selected. It is the way it was in nature. It is very easy to digest and has this panel for nutritional value. Einkorn could save the world, according to Gary, because Einkorn would... Okay, yeah, take everything that Gary says and be like, yeah, this is totally factual because Gary said it. Stop, stop, don't say that, because it's not true. Gary didn't know what the fuck he was talking about. Basically, ever, he made everything up and he cut out people's gallbladders <laughs> without being an actual surgeon. Like, this dude pretended he knew everything that he knew nothing about. Would bring the necessary proteins and the benefits in health, and that would help a lot of people. Oh, can I mention too that as far as the Seed to Seal logo goes, there have been new products coming out, even including uh, some of their like diffusers and stuff, where they took the Seed to Seal label off. 
So please, yeah, put the label on the oils that actually are controlled in a seed to seal philosophy. <laughs> I don't know. It just seems like they're kind of phasing out the seed to seal logo on a lot of their products. But uh, I mean, here in this presentation, they're still buckling down on it. This video of all the videos we've launched so far is my favorite. I want you to hang on to the last statement that Gary said, because we're going to talk more about that this afternoon. So, okay, all in the details. So again, this is intended to be really raw footage. This is behind the scenes. It's not polished. It's not high production like the video I just shared with you. But it shows you that by owning our own farms, which we're the only essential oil company that can do that or does that. I told you. Because of that, we can do really cool research. We know things about essential oils and harvesting and when to extract that oil than any other oil company. So this is a really cool video example of Nicholas Landell. I also have the video example of uh, something Chris Bowerbank shared, but I'm just going to share the Nicholas Landell one. But see what she just said there is misleading. Just like everything involving seed to seal is misleading. She's like, because we own our own farms, we know more about plants and blah, blah, blah. And like, it's like, but we know that you don't cultivate all those plants. They're like, we know more about how to harvest and when to harvest and blah, 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 blah. It's like, okay, on, on what? On lavender? We know you have lavender farms. On iron corn? Okay, yeah. But you have like hundreds of essential oils and a very big majority of those plants are not grown on your farms. See, like that kind of language tells me that they're getting their distributors to hear that kind of stuff and being like, yeah, that's why all of our stuff is the best because we have all this knowledge that other people don't have. And define an essential oil company because, okay, yeah, sure, doTERRA doesn't own farms. They import all their shit, whatever. But it's like, I mean, someone's growing those plants and some of those companies are probably producing essential oils. I just, I don't know the chain of custody with the raw materials to the oil, to the manufacturer, to the whatever. I don't know that line of custody, but they're simplifying it to a point where I don't think it's realistic. Hey everyone, my name is Nicholas Landell and I'm the manager of our French farm. I'm here today to share with you a little bit about the research and the testing we do on the farm. It's very important for our standard seed to seal to uh, gain knowledge and to understand the perfect conditions to grow, harvest and distill our plants and to try and get the best quality oil. To start this, I wanted to share a little bit about what's behind me. This is a weather station. This allows us to follow how the weather affects uh, the plant and the essential oil. We get uh, how much rain we get per year or per month. We get wind, we get temperature, and all this data allows us when we go into distillation and analysis to see if the weather uh, has affected the essential oil inside the plant or even during the, the, the growth of the plant in the fields, how the weather affects I mean, are you going to try to tell me that farms across the world who grow other shit, like, don't also have access to this kind of stuff? Like, they're making it seem, wow, like, look at all that technology. That's so amazing that we're able to do that. It's like, I'm sure that's, like, kind of standard on farms in general, right? <laughs> okay, and the last thing, I'm not going to play this video because I've already shared two videos with you, um, but Farm to Label with our Mark, uh, Mark Bartlett. He will be presenting to you later today. Mark He's Farlett. Really, pointed out. We're so lucky to have him. He's going to revolutionize and change the way that we do some of our business, some of our products, some of our essential oils. Uh, so I'm excited for him to share with all of you. So what's next and what can you expect for marketing? I'm going to dive through, I think, six things here really quickly. But I want you to know that all of this is coming in 2023. We need to strengthen the story that you see on our Seed to Sale site. I know on Seed to Sale, it doesn't give you the full list of everything we test for. It will. We need to change that. So we're thank you. The to sale site. We're aligning on messaging. I'm going to share with this group since it's our diamond team um, and platinum's with us as well. Seed to seal because it's such a high standard that everybody wants and covets. It's become something that's really targeted. You guys feel that it's targeted all the time. Well, what's happening is now we're getting a lot of attacks where they want us to treat seed to seal like we treat product claims. That's not a great thing. I mean, it's a good thing. We need to make sure we're saying what's accurate. But what it means is that we have to be a lot more cautious about the claims we make around seed to sill. And so if you're noticing it's taking us a little bit longer to give you all of those things, it's only because there's a vetting process that we're going through behind the scenes to make sure that when we share something on social media, in our videos, on this website, that you can take it and say it as well. We're not making a claim that we can't defend. But before they decided to upgrade the seed to seal website, that was totally okay. That's why a bunch of information just kept getting pumped out because like they didn't give a shit about the vetting process, but now they do because they're getting called out. Okay, excuse me. You guys have been a company for almost three decades. And I know the internet hasn't really been around for that entire time, but it's like you've had ample opportunity to provide this kind of information, this education, the truth. And it only happens 
2022 is the year where you guys got called out on your shit and now suddenly we got to make sure that what we're saying about seed to seal is true it should have been true the entire time it should have been part of the onboarding process to be like here's what's true about our seed to seal and here's what's not you can say this but you can't say this this is why you need your haters because your haters are the ones who are holding you accountable it's like you can't just go around spouting out shit that's not true and they do it all the time and now they're suddenly like hey guys you can't lie anymore the haters caught on to us and you can't lie anymore we can't say the things that aren't accurate anymore because they were letting it happen they weren't correcting anybody but this kind of misinformation that we started calling them out on this year was running rampant all over social media, all over any source of information about Young Living you could find, there was misinformation about Seed to Seal and what it meant. And only now, when they start getting called out for it, now they suddenly want to fix it. Their intentions were never to actually provide actual product education and actual truth to their consumers, to their distributors. They, they never started any of this to be truthful and accurate. It only mattered when they got caught. So I mean, to me, you're really basing your entire Young Living's entire foundation on dishonesty. So it's more, I mean, it starts with seed to seal. Sure. Here's your step one. Start getting accurate shit out. Okay. And make sure you provide proof. But then I'm like, you can't really prove any of this shit without releasing test results. And I don't know if they ever will. They always fall back on, well, it's proprietary information. Like we're so special. It's proprietary information. We can't do that. Sure you can. You're not telling us how you're distilling your oils and what what the recipes are and shit. Like you're literally just telling us what the final product contains and they won't even do that. You have to go to a third party lab to get that information. And that's just so fucked up. All of it is fucked up. And this Becky Webb person on the side is like, finally, finally you're gonna educate us on the foundations of our company. And so it just, it's a process in time. So I just wanna note that I say it's coming late 2023. I, there's gonna be small updates to the site throughout the year. So it's not a big reveal late 2023, but by then I hope you'll be able to use this site as your single source of truth for all things seed to sell. You guys have to provide that though. Um, I touched on this already, but just making sure we're sharing more and more seed to sell content and making it very social shareable for you guys. So watch for that as well. Um, two new things I'm so excited about. This month, this month, this is what's going to happen. We are launching new farm pages on youngliving.com. Each of our farms, I know I'm so excited about this. They're beautiful pages. They will continue to evolve. There will be interactive elements where you can really get up close and personal with our farms. Only a small percentage of our, our brand partners are able to actually attend a fart. So we need to bring the farms <laughs> to, to attend them. a fart. These pages will help us do that. We also have the farm booking site live. It is live right now today. I've given you the URL up here, but you'll be able to link to this site on any of the farm pages. So once you go in and experience the farm site, you'll be able to book a tour there. I'm gonna give you a quick walkthrough of the farm experience tour site so you can see all that it includes. So if you go to Young Living Farm Tours, this is what the site looks like. Uh, you'll click book now. We do have 10 of our farms currently listed, more to come. So watch for that. Wait, 10? Um, you can read more details about the farms here. According to youngliving.com, it says that there's six farms. What is this 10 farm shit? The farms listed on this website, the ones that aren't owned by them, they're like, these are, this is our partner farm since 2018, since 2007, since blah, blah, blah. So, so yeah. Okay, great. You can tour some of these farms. That's cool. Also, you can book a tour of the Mona, Utah farm, Tabiona, Utah. Dude, do you think they'd let me in? <laughs> I mean, I live in Arizona. We are bordering Utah. They'd probably deny me at the door, right? Do I have to wear a disguise? I'll wear one of my wigs. I don't know. I want to do that, though. Plan your wedding or special event at the Lavender Farm. Oh, my God. Bed and breakfast and cafe opening soon? <gasps> Can you imagine? Oh, my God. And I'll tell you, I don't know if Joe Walker's in the, the room, but our farm team, the white glove service approach this. So when you book these tours, they will meet you. They will help you with your hotel if you choose to stay overnight. Some of these farms allow you to stay overnight on the farm. How exciting is that? I want to. So if you are planning retreats with your teens, if you are um, trying to get others to understand our seed to sell story, use this farm site, bring your teams. It is available for you. Our farms were created for all of you. And Mary loves to open up her home. She loves to open up our farms. 
so that you can experience them as well. So use them as you would like. I just mentioned this, but we are not hiding our farms. We want brand partners to have the concierge service when they come to our farms, but we also want to make sure that the media and anyone that would really like to come, it's open to them. This is something that we're sharing with everyone. Okay, lastly, I'm most excited about this. I probably should have led with this. You have asked for so long that you want to see our GCMS reports. You want to see what tests every single essential oil goes through. You want to see that in the order, right? You want to be able to say, if your new customer receives a package from us, they get to know that that oil was tested 50 for by 52 different tests and it passed every single one. So this is coming. We are in the process of making this available to brand partners digitally, possibly putting something in the order, as I mentioned, maybe it's a QR code on the product label, but we're working through the details to make sure that you know all the steps we took to test that product. How long have we been asking for this? And all it took was exposing their lies. <laughs> okay, when this happens, we have to take this with a grain of salt. For example, back in the black oxygen organics time, they had a quality, what was it? A testing result, but it wasn't tested by a third party. They didn't say who tested it, where they tested it, any information, we couldn't like call and, and check with the laboratory that, like there was nothing. It wasn't even signed by like someone who did all this testing and stuff. They just like made a document, it had their logo on it, all that shit. And it was very clearly adulterated because when a bunch of other people started actually testing Boo, they were getting different results. And maybe we can like crowd fund something. I don't know because I don't want to spend money on young living oils themselves. I would like to, if we could find a way to pay for testing, I just like don't want to have to buy oils from young living because I don't want to give them money. It would be really interesting to compare those test results to see, seriously, I'm, I'm dead fucking serious. Like this is something that someone needs to do. And if it's not me, it's got to be someone who is willing to look into young living and be like, here's the testing results they provided. Here's what the third party testing said we'll have to tackle this when this actually happens at the same time though they kept giving excuses like oh it would take us years to be able to find a way to give you these testing results i'm like why like why is it that hard everyone else can do it why and they're just like coming soon okay when is soon okay are they gonna keep because they've been saying coming soon they've been saying like within the next five years we're gonna have this and they've been saying that for years it's not that hard for every other essential oil company to release this kind of stuff. So please explain to us why this is taking you so long. I hope you guys are excited for what's to come after this because I need to stop. <laughs> I've been filming for two and a half hours and I think I need to take a break <laughs> and um, have this just be part one. Pop-Tart, she wants attention, so. You wanna come say hi? We'll end the video with a Pop-Tart cameo because we love her so much, huh? She's like got her bomb me like, get away from me. Are you mad at me for picking you up? I love you. Anyway, guys, um, yeah, there's so much more where this came from, and I do want to go through all of it, assuming that you guys want me to. I mean, if you don't, we'll make other plans, I guess, but there's so much content here that I think is actually really important to go through because, like I've even said, even in my, uh, like, top fails of 2022 video, I really think that Young Living is on such thin ice right now. So, really, we need to hold them accountable, continuing through 2023, and listen, they're, they're saying a lot of great shit here. They're saying some awful shit, too, but some great shit where they're saying, we're going to finally listen to the criticism and quit just thinking that we're invincible because that's literally what it's been. I've been talking about Young Living since what, like 2018 or something like that. But I feel like so many of the themes of the first Young Living video I ever made are still relevant today. How much louder do we need to shout? How, how much more do we have to do to get you to start being a little more ethical in how you run yourselves as a company? While they'll never be completely ethical as long as they're still a multi-level marketing company, at the very least, while their business model will never <laughs> be ethical, and you know, maybe they can change that if they get out of the MLM business model, then fine, maybe we can talk then, but I don't see it ever happening. At the very least, they could at least be transparent and honest about all their marketing and shit. Like they've never done that before, really. I mean, they'll say that they have, but I call bullshit. They've always been being like, oh no, we're, we're totally legit, we're totally cool, and then like offer no proof to back that up. So now they're finally doing that and we need to continue to hold them accountable for this. So 
I think 2023 is going to be a make it or break it year for Young Living. If they can pull this out, maybe they can save themselves or the anti-MLM movement can just keep going and going and going and maybe get some sort of other actions done that's gonna screw over Young Living and every other MLM. We'll see. You know, I have some high hopes for 2023 as far as what's gonna happen with these companies that we've been spotlighting and Young Living is one of the ones I will be keeping the most watchful eye on because I think it's very, very interesting and I can't wait to see where it goes from here. Anyway, we'll have a part two to this as long as you guys want me to make a part two, part three, part four, part five. There's so many, there's hours of this, okay? And now it's time to thank some people. First of all, thank you to HelloFresh for sponsoring this video. Guys, make sure that you use my code and my link down below to get yourself a sweet discount on HelloFresh. You're gonna love them, I guarantee it. I love HelloFresh, they're great. So give them a shot today. <laughs> oh, look at that. I, I just opened my YouTube studio to start reading people's names and stuff and it says hooray it's your channel's birthday you've come so far just imagine where you and your community will be next year keep doing you i plan on it thanks for being here guys patrons and members let's talk about that here the list of people that i'm about to name off are my financial supporters they get access to things like our private discord server early access to videos sometimes whenever i'm able to and sometimes more so if any of that sounds good to you you can go to patreon.com slash savannah marie or you can click the join button beneath this video to join our youtube membership it's all the same, just whatever platform you want to join on, it's fine by me. And with that, the biggest thank you in the whole wide world goes to Fallon Lowry, Hannah, Little Birdie, Miss Blue, Mira S.I.K., Blazed Goddess, Martine Hubert, Carrie K., Vegan Chicky Nuggy, Love to Be Evil, Natalie Scott, Colin F., The Best Elephant, Jessica Billhart, Laura Jensen, Mitchie 84, Jess Kronfeld, Emion, Auntie Lou, Hula Chowdown, Janelle Pratt, Amanda Shannon, Christy Taylor, Elizabeth Wyatt, Nitty Dragon, Leanne, Meredith Nakata, Ryan Mew, Sheila Tapia, Willow Raymond, Alice W, Boris Geller, Caroline Reed, Daniel Urena, Hannibal Crossing, Heidi Ha, Jacqueline Nutton, Kim Cartwright, Maddie Darley, Marley Fletcher, Ray, Tuesday the 13th, and Turd Ferguson. And to the rest of my fabulous supporters, thank you so much for being here and being you. And even if you're not a financial supporter, thanks for making it to the end of this video. My camera's gonna turn off in 15 seconds, so I gotta make this fast. I appreciate you all so, so much. Keep making waves, babes. I'll smell you all later. Make another part to this video and uh yeah mommy tsunami now uh mommy tsunami out i'm, I'm out bye 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 bye